2023 looks like it could be an excellent year for movies, so let's talk about some of my most anticipated ones. Welcome to Box of Chocolates, where you never know what you're gonna get. Thank you for joining me here. I was looking at the list of upcoming movies, and there were so many that looked good and that I wanted to talk about. I was like, should I just do a top 10, a top 20, maybe divide the year into halves? And what I settled on was this a video for sequels, and a video for non-sequels. So we're gonna go over the sequels that I'm looking forward to the most. This type of video often leans heavily on sequels and franchise stuff because it's about movies that you know enough about at the beginning of the year to be anticipating them, and so you're gonna know more about franchise stuff. So we'll give the non-sequels their time to shine in an upcoming video, but for now, let's get into the sequels that I'm looking forward to the most. Even this was hard, I had to narrow it down. There are plenty more that I'm looking forward to. But starting off with my number 10, something I'm very curious to see how they're gonna make it work, Evil Dead Rise. Evil Dead in an apartment building doesn't really make sense to me, it doesn't gel in my mind, I'm confused by that sentence, but also extremely curious as to what the hell that's gonna look like. It's also very intriguing that they would do that. I really enjoyed the 2013 Evil Dead, I thought it was a lot of fun, there was just so much blood, it was very entertaining. This is probably not gonna have any connection to any of the other movies as far as we've seen. Haven't seen a trailer yet, so my hype could go up after that. But just the idea of getting another bloody, fun Evil Dead movie after after all this time, seeing what they might do with it, what they might do different, I think it could be really entertaining. Number nine is a movie where my hype might increase after I've watched the entire franchise, because I actually haven't yet, and that is Creed 3. There's like eight of these, and I have not seen the entire franchise yet, so if I get on a rocky marathon, I might get really in the mood and get really excited for Creed 3, but even as it is, I am excited for it. It looks good, a Jonathan Majors, Seems like he's gonna be an interesting antagonist. Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut, so I'm really curious to see what he's going to do with it. So as someone who is far behind on the Rocky franchise, this really excites me to catch up and see this one when it comes out. Number eight, for all the insanity that's happening over at DC right now, I am still looking forward to Shazam! Fury of the Gods, because I really enjoyed the first one. I thought it was a lot of fun. David F. Sandberg returns. We got the cast returning. Zachary Levi was really good in the main role. I'm very curious to see what it's going to be like. The trailers haven't really blown me away or anything. I just had a lot of fun with the first one, so I'm looking forward to this one as well. Will Shazam stick around after this? More likely than a lot of the other characters, but we still don't know. But either way, the first Shazam was very much its own thing, and so I'm looking forward to at least one more hopefully fun Shazam movie. Number seven, a movie that's kind of crazy that we're actually getting it, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. The big reason I'm really excited for this is James Mangold. If you talked about handing the indie franchise over to someone else, that's worrying, but I think James Mangold is a really good pick, and I think he can bring it home. I'm very curious to see what it's gonna be like with Harrison Ford, the age that he is now as Indy, one more time, but I think they're gonna pull it off pretty well. I think it's easily gonna be better than Crystal Skull, at the very least, right? I'm not a massive Indiana Jones fan. I didn't grow up watching them or anything, but I do like them. Temple of Doom is the best one, by the way. Not sorry. But I do really want to see how they're going to give a send-off to Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, this iconic character. I think it could be really good. And in number six, we will continue to watch Tom Cruise attempt to kill himself in outrageous stunts. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part 1. It's crazy how much better the Mission Impossible franchise has gotten. I enjoy the earlier movies, but they just stepped their game up so much in recent years. With the dedication to the stunt work and the direction and even the script and the story, and now we have Christopher McQuarrie who has carried over from movie to movie, which was not the case for the first several MI films. We've gotten more of a connected storyline. This one's straight up called Part 1, which worries me a a little bit like are we gonna feel lacking is it gonna end on a cliffhanger is it gonna be really annoying but i think it's just gonna be another example of some of the best 
stunt work, and high-octane action filmmaking out there. It's gonna be really fun. Number five, a franchise that's very close to my heart. We just got one this year. We're getting another one next year, and that is Scream 6. I really enjoyed Scream 5. I think Scream is possibly the most consistent slasher franchise. There's only one that's not really all that good, and even that one is not terrible or anything. It's kind of just okay, and if that Scream 3 is your worst one for a long-running slasher franchise, you're doing pretty good. 5 was very enjoyable. It played it kind of safe, and so I'm looking forward to them going gorier, which they've said they will, going into these more chase scenes, which they've said they're going to do, and hopefully having some interesting killer reveals, interesting motivations. I really like what they did to update it for Scream 5, so I am a little concerned that they're making another one so quickly. Can you do something fresh? But I hope they'll be able to. The Nev Campbell situation is a whole big can of worms, bunch of bullshit. That's upsetting but I still think the movie will be a lot of fun. How many times have I said that? <laughs> How many times have I said the word fun? It's probably gonna be fun. I hope every movie ever is fun. Number four, if you watched my recent Blu-ray collection video, I talked for quite a bit about how this franchise is also close to my heart. Another horror movie, Saw 10. Saw X, is that even the final title? But I've been a massive Saw fan ever since the first one blew my mind when I watched it, when it came out. I followed all the sequels, I followed the insane, convoluted, nonsensical lore, and loved the movies for it. They are incredibly stupid, the plot is absurd, and that's why it's fun. <laughs> you can look past that stuff and laugh at it. Some of the movies are definitely way worse than others, but at the very least it's like, oh that's a cool trap. That guy's getting his arm ripped off or something, that's fun, right? I just have a lot of memories associated with this franchise and I really want it to get back on top again. I had a lot of fun with Jigsaw just because Saw came back and it was cool to see it again, but it was very stupid. And then Spiral was, I, 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 don't, I don't know about all that. And from what they've been saying, it seems like they're really gonna try to make like a good movie. And that's a novel concept. I'd love to see them go for that. Because even as a big Saw fan, I can say there are very few movies in this franchise that are technically what could probably be called good. Hell, maybe even only one. But you know, I love it anyway, and I just, I really hope. I have put this high on the list because my hope is so strong that this will be something really solid. And if it's not, I'll be very sad. That's enough about that though. Moving on from horror to action, we have number three, John Wick chapter four. These movies kick ass. I do get worried that they have already run out of story. There's been very little the entire time. It's mainly just John Wick kills dudes, but he does it so well. Keanu is so good in this role. It's become so iconic for him. The action is just some of the best out there that as long as you can keep giving me more of that, then yes, please do. Three was kind of the wonkiest story-wise, because it was kind of just like a way to extend the franchise, but it also had possibly the best action in the whole thing. So with the story, I hope they are able to build towards something. Don't just keep milking the franchise until you've run it into the ground. Try and actually get somewhere, but either way, with so many of the other cast members who have been added for this one, with just the idea of more John Wick action, I am absolutely there for it. I've watched the original John Wick so many times since it came out. I'm so glad that that found so much success and that everybody loves the franchise now, and I want to see more. Number two, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Animation style in Into the Spider-Verse was so good, so entertaining. Looks like it's going to be the same in this one, probably even crazier with all of the different universes, all of the different characters. I mean, in that trailer, there were just so many that are going to be in the background for one second, and it's like, what's going on with that? Why is that Spider-Man have a paper bag on his head? I have no idea what that's about. And just the scale of this is going to be insane. And I hope they're able to keep it a nice 
human, emotional, personal story for Miles and Gwen and the main characters. And it seems like they're going to. And it seems interesting that we're going to have a lot of conflict amongst the spider people. It makes me very curious exactly what the plot is going to be like. We haven't even gotten a glimpse of our actual villain in the trailer that we did get. But a lot of people call this the best Spider-Man movie, and I completely understand why. And so getting more of that, yes please. But my number one, it really wasn't even a contest. I knew this was going to be my number one the entire time. We're sticking in the realm of Marvel. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. The first two I absolutely love. They're some of my favorite of the MCU, if not my absolute favorite. I remember seeing the first one opening night, Thursday night, and then I saw it again Friday morning, like right after, because I wanted to see it again as soon as possible. The second one I really liked upon my first viewing, but just not as much as the first one. It was a tiny bit disappointing. But then on rewatches, I grew to like it just as much as the first one, and now I love them both in equal measure. They make me laugh a ton. They get me emotional. I love the characters. This is going to be the end of some of those characters, at least in some form. This is James Gunn's finale here in the MCU, and I cannot wait to see how he closes it out. We got these new characters like Adam Warlock and the High Evolutionary, and I want to see what what their deal is and just I'm gonna laugh I'm gonna cry and I just hope that this really delivers because if it does it could be just phenomenal for me but let me know what you think about these movies are you looking forward to them as well are you looking forward to some other ones that I didn't mention like I said there were more if I wanted to do a top 15 or top 20 but I had to narrow it down so what are you looking forward to in 2023 in terms of sequels non-sequel video will be coming soon thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed subscribe to the channel to catch that video and all the reviews that are going to come in 2023. Share this video around to help the channel grow. I really appreciate that. I also have Twitter and Letterboxd linked in the description if you want to check those out. Thank you, and I hope to see you for the next one.